All right. Uh, Bengt Nilevall, payment expert at the Swedish Trade Federation. Is that a right way of uh, describing you? That's perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe, maybe we should explain first a little bit uh, the Swedish Trade Federation. Uh, what is that before we go into more? Uh, yeah, what, what is the Swedish Trade Federation for anyone who haven't heard about you? Svensk Handel. Svensk Handel is the Swedish Trade Federation. Yes, it's an organization, branch organizations for, uh, for merchants. Uh, and uh, we organize, uh, you know, their, their thoughts and, and drive their, their issues. And uh, that's an employer uh, organization as well. Yeah. And that's your what... role there is that you, uh, you, you, you are particularly focused on, uh, you're like a payment expert. You, 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 you represent sort of, uh, well, the trade federation when it comes to payment issues. Uh, is that a fair that's, statement? Yeah, that's correct. And it's usually, basically, it's, it's a consumer to business payments. That's yeah. what I'm concerned about. That's what we drive and that's what we like to improve all the time. Yeah. And um, to improve it, what are you looking for, Bengt? What, what, what is sort of... Uh, yeah, what, what, what are you trying to do in order to improve it? And what can you do from your, your horizon? And how can you, how can you influence uh, the payment uh, scene in Sweden uh, in your direction? Well, it's, uh, I mean, uh, for the merchants and for the customers, we need um, like some fast payments, uh, convenience payments, secure payments at the low cost. And to get that, we have to emphasize competition. So that is basically what I think I... I'm supposed to do emphasize competition in the Swedish market and the European market because it's getting more and more global payment structure out there. So that's basically what I'm doing. I try to emphasize companies, competition, try right to, the, to the authorities to they have to look at competition laws and so on. So do we do have more uh, alternative when it comes to payments in the in the in the retail sector yeah and then and i you and i we we organized uh, this uh, tour well this webinars uh, you know the role of the swedish state in digital payments and uh, one of the one of the issues we talked about there was what happens if cash goes away uh, which is sort of kind of happening uh, you know it, it's at least yeah you, i think you said that we have to understand that 98 percent of uh, sort of grocery stores still accept cash uh, but uh, how do you? How does the Swedish Trade Federation or yourself, uh, Bengt here? How, how do you look about that? That we might be losing, uh, you know, uh, a very special, in a way, means of payment, which cash represents. Well, it's it's uh, driven by customers and and uh, and the retailers by themselves, of course, but also from the banks and the authorities. So we are moving fast to a cashless society. And that's uh, becoming more understood that it's a kind of concern because we don't have so much alternative. Now we are basically relying on card payments, uh, mainly. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, I would say, should be a concern that we don't have a fallback if anything goes down or we don't have alternative to compete with when you discuss um, cost and so on. So. Uh, all of a sudden, we are here. Uh, it's been going very rapidly over the ten years, and now it's like more than more than eighty-five percent of the transactions in the retail sectors is made by uh, cards. So I think it's more than ever uh, important to have alternatives. Yeah, yeah, because I, I you know, I, I wrote this article: uh, "Cash is dead. Long live cash." <laughs> uh, and also cash is king of digital payments because I, 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 re, I, I really believe that the, some of the properties that cash uh, has, the fact that it's robust, it will always works, uh, that will never ever be to, to 100% degree replaced by say cards or uh, even Swish because they, they all rely on online. Uh, there, there is always uh, right. the online component in these uh, schemes. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, cash. I mean, like uh, you said in the in the beginning, that uh, most of the retailers do take cash because there are some groups that do would like to pay cash, but it's getting fewer and fewer transactions. Mm -hmm. But and I think the solution is not to go back more cash; is to look to alternatives 
to cash, to alternative payments, and make them easier for those groups who have a problem paying with uh, digital payments. Yeah. That is an issue for a, a, a society like Sweden going cashless, that we have to emphasize all and look at those who have problem with digital payments. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I, I see it. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with the um, sort of some, um, some groups in the society, uh, it could be elderly or young people, if cash is gone, you know, it's, uh, that, that's going to create problems. But I, I also see it a little bit from a, uh, you know, robustness uh, point of view. I see it from a privacy point of view. There, there are yeah. things uh, that cash deliver to a market that the digital payment uh, services um, don't simply. No, that's correct. Privacy is a concern. And if you look around in Europe for, for stay close, they are much more concerned of privacy than Sweden are. So, but I will eventually, I think that we also are more concerned than we think that uh, cash is more privacy than uh, a card payment that you can track all the way down. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also sort of robustness. I think there is, you, you, yeah, you... How is it for your merchants? Because uh, you know how it is that uh, it could be a card server that goes down or it could be a bank server. Or it's, it, it is uh, our electronic identification. Uh, we call it, you know, bank ID goes down or switch goes down. It, it seems to, to be quite honest. I think there is always something that goes down uh, every second week almost. Uh, and it hits the news because people don't carry around cash anymore here in Sweden. Yeah, but I will say that even though if you are into it and you see some small of hiccups, but in the broad, broader section, uh, it works very well uh, in Sweden, oh, yeah. I would no, say. No, I, but, but, uh, for, I but for reason, sure, yeah. I, uh, for sure, there will be uh, moments and, uh, in the future that is going down. And I think it's a problem to rely on it uh, so much that we do today. So we need alternative for that, for offline payments as well. Yeah, no, because I, I think there is there is kind of uh, I, I I absolutely agree that uh, I think the reason why Sweden might become here uh, in just a few years cashless society is simply because the uh, the digital payment service that we have works so great, so uh, people just love to use them. Uh, so I, I and I don't I uh, you know I'm I'm a keen user myself of cards and Swiss, so I'm uh, I, I I do fully understand it, but but I it's still this. Um, uh, you know, uh, to create the robustness needed, I think for a, if you look at your merchants here, uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's not good if all of a sudden say, it, it could be that cards are down. And, and I guess one way to go around this robustness is to have alternatives, like you can, um, yes, then I can pay with Swish. Uh, right. And yeah, so, so that's one way to solve for robustness. But, but I, I, I as you know, we, we are pushing this idea of uh, uh, trying to uh, replicate replicate cash, uh, the properties of cash in a digital form. And because I, and and it's the beauty I think with our solution is that we simply see it as a two step process. Uh, we we see that you, you know, uh, for the merchant to release the customer good, with goods and services, um, it, it is simply an offline settlement. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, it's just like the same way as you have just given them a, a banknote, sort of, a, you know, some money, uh, you, you have given them something. And, and that's a complete transaction. It's an offline settled transaction. Then the subsequent step of when we're going to move money between accounts, that's a subsequent separate step. And if you just think of payments like that, instead of how it's always been thought of as a one integral process of uh, you know, going up online to uh, identify yourself that you have to do with Swish or alternatively that the merchant terminal need to check your balance. Um, th th you have you made yourself reliant on, on the cloud and, and a lot of, uh, th th you know, there's a lot of services that needs to work, all of them, otherwise it fails. So I think it's a sensitive system. It is. I mean, and you, you need, you do need to have some fallback, and that's why I think it's. I'm so curious about you guys uh, providing some alternative when it comes to, to offline payments. Uh, so that's a part of why I'm here, and I emphasize some companies that uh, have look at the payment in another way. 
yeah. so that that we can help out to to get rid of this problem. For of course, it's going to be uh, offline moments in the retail sector uh, in the in the future. And that when it's happening on a Friday afternoon is a very damaging time if you if you lose payments in the, that's a prime time for a retailer yeah and, and, and my my actually my vision actually goes a little bit beyond that because i think if i talk to some payment networks today they say well offline is it may just be uh, if, you know because you know if you're using the card rail uh, a merchant can accept an offline payment up to what is called a floor limit uh, there is sort of a limit what uh, a merchant can accept on the floor without sort of asking online. Uh, th th there are built mechanisms for that, but it's it's the acquiring bank would take a risk uh, for such a transaction. Uh, but and th then they could measure how many of those are then happening in that May, and and may, it may not just be a few percent. But I uh, my vision is that why don't we make all transactions offline uh, as a norm? Uh, you know, you don't need any signaling. Um, the only only time you really need to go online is if you don't have sufficient balance, sufficient money on your on, on your or your, on your phone. Uh, if you just have mm. sufficient balance, why why complicate it? Why don't see it as an offline, you know, uh, transaction? Uh, and then the merchant is fine. He knows he's gonna get paid. It's a guaranteed payment. It's guaranteed by I don't know central bank or. Uh, or uh, the payment network itself, or the bank, or someone, uh, and then uh, the settlement can happen anytime at the merchant's, uh, you know, merchant's choice, directly or next day or an hour later. But the fact that we split it is, is sort of is actually an um, it, it's it's that that is the whole trick, really. Yeah, but I mean, and for sure, and as so as long as it's convenient both for the for the retailer and the the customers, and you know, fast and secure. Well, that is a, could be a perfect solution um, as long as so we don't we are depending on the online because everything is moving to online at the moment. Yeah, Even no. you're talking about, uh, well, cards, you can accept the offline for a, um, until a certain amount, but the risk is getting moved more to, towards the, the retailers. All right. So everything is actually moving to online more and more, at least the risk for the merchants. So um, if that is solutions that is for every transaction, well, that's convenient for both sides. Yeah, so yeah. I'm no, I, excited I think, about that. Yeah, it, it, it all relies on that you securely can actually maintain then that balance, uh, that you have that balance uh, securely maintained. But I think technology is here now. The time has come for such sort of uh, types of payments. And um, it, it is, uh, you know, talking to some, some of the networks here that they, they look at, there are card payments, plastic, plastic cards. There are mobile payments, uh, uh, which where we are sort of emulating a card using host card emulation. Uh, but it's both these systems are essentially online system, as you say. It, it moves that way, and 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 they recognize that what we come with here, it's sort of a hybrid. Uh, it's sort of a third type of payment, which uh, mm. hasn't really existed before. Uh, and it's highly interesting because it, it creates sort of new opportunity, new use cases uh, for, uh, for digital payments, really. And it's essentially it's replicating cash in digital form. Cash is great, but uh, it needs to be digital. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and you have to move forward. I mean, and like I said, the timing, I guess, is perfect. I mean, we are many countries and we are in the forefront, Sweden and a couple of Nordic countries are the forefront to going less and less of, of, of the cash and then we need some alternative to the cash uh, uh, and everybody other countries looking into it as well so well timing is very good uh, that's for sure yeah and it, it, and for me who is you know we, we you know that we we, have, we worked at two markets sweden where it's a, it's a market where the it infrastructure is so great so people have given up on cash almost um, and we are a good fit there which is interesting for us, as you say, it's because you need it for the robustness uh, if cash is no longer in people's wallets. But, but, but we're also working in India, which is a completely right. different market where I, the latest number I heard was 82% of the retail transactions are made by cash. So it's, it's, it's an, you know, this is a cash <laughs> society. And, um, right. but, but for them, uh, this is also perfect timing because 
the reason why people still use cash there is for, that they don't they're not living in Ericsson land with the perfect uh, IT infrastructure so they need it in order to get robustness in their everyday payment situation but but right now in the pandemic you know uh, there is so uh, much more people who want to do digital payments and the bank mm. servers are not coping uh, uh, yes, no. yeah it, it's it's killing the bank servers you know they October last year, they did uh, 1 billion transactions on uh, what is called UPI. This is their real-time payment switch. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they did 2 billion this October. But the decline rates has gone from, um, you know, they, they, are, they are sort of like 10% declines uh, or even more. I, I just interviewed Ram Rastogi, who is sort of, uh, he's, he said, he, uh, I couldn't hardly believe it. He said 24% declines. You know, 24% wow. out of 2 billion transactions, that is 500 million failed transactions every month. But it, I guess, I mean, the, the, the infrastructure for, for internet and everything is, is not a, near what is in Europe or in Sweden. No, but, but, but my point is that, that we are a, a great fit there as well. I, say, I think you, you're right that we're yeah. a great fit for Sweden uh, because I think we need it for robustness as a... Uh, as, as sort of uh, we, we're losing this sort of great means of payment cash it just needs to it just needs to be uh, digital but even in india who, who do not have a great it infrastructure is it's absolutely required there as well uh, it, it's sort of so it's um yeah it, I, I think sort of this is it's not just um, a great thing for um, a market like sweden it, it's certainly a uh, a great solution also for emerging markets who are struggling with uh, uh, not so great IT infrastructure, and also uh, right now in the pandemic, every bank service are not coping with the sheer load. Uh, it, it's just an enormous load. Sounds perfect. I mean, to work in a very mature country uh, on the other one hand, and the other one is working with a, a new country that is moving towards digital payments. I guess it's yeah, I no, no, I, I know. We, we have we've chosen our, uh, you know, uh, markets carefully. And India is sort of, it's fun to work with. Uh, they're very open and very innovative and they are, they're, they're moving fast. Uh, you know, UPI was launched uh, uh, November 2016. You know, Swish was launched in uh, 2012. And mm. now I think, uh, you, we're not as many, but Swish is a huge service in Europe uh, perspective. You know, they, uh, yeah, no. they do 50 million transactions a month. But look at UPI, they have... I think they are now uh, close to 2.5 billion, and they started. Uh, they, they started four years later. So uh, you can just imagine the sheer uh, explosion I, happening. I have to ask you a question. How do you come? How do you find uh, India? Were you looking for a, a country that's moving towards digital payment from a lower stand, or? Was that just a coincidence that well, you? No, well, it, it, it was sort of, uh, it, it was by coincidence, actually. It, it was one of our uh, ex board members, uh, Mikkel Kretz, and he was, he was sort of, um, he's, he's part of something called the Founders Alliance. Uh, it's a Swedish uh, entrepreneurial uh, society, and they, 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 they do a, once a year, they do a trip, uh, and they, they went to India. Uh, yeah, cool. And, uh, you know, being a sort of an, uh, you know, like an entrepreneurial association, they, uh, they, they, they met other, the Payment Council of India, for instance, they met with them. And, and there were a guy there uh, who uh, actually spotted Michael's uh, CV, that he actually had a, a connection with the company who did payments, Crunchfish then. Uh, so he asked for if he could meet. And then uh, I remember Michael calling me all excited and saying, well, you have to talk to this guy. You have to talk to this guy. <laughs> he seems to really. And, uh, and, and uh, VJ Raghunathan, as his name, you know, he's an ex, uh, he's been with uh, American Express and he's been in payments in, for 25, 30 years. And, but um, that was just a, yeah, we were very happy. And, uh, yeah, I guess and so. uh, then starting to read about India, uh, understanding is the fastest growing mobile pa payments market in the world. And already from a, a big size, uh, mm. you know, uh, I, I couldn't say no <laughs> to no. start looking at it. But it wasn't, no, I, it wasn't a strategic choice. It was sort of like most things in life sometimes that uh, it's sort of, um, yeah, unless Michael had met him, I, I don't think we would have been in India. And, and, and right now it's, uh, I'm, I'm very happy it happened, obviously. Yeah, and it's kind of convenient now when you li live in a, uh, a digital meeting world, it's easier to have meetings in India yeah. uh, than before. So I, it had to be something about it, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, no, but you're right. I think right now in the in the COVID days, I, I'm actually part of almost every meeting in India because I'm as close to the customer as they are because uh, they don't have physical meetings at the moment. And, and most of the offices are closed. Uh, so uh, there, there are still sort of just digital meetings. But it means that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of having one, two, three meetings a day with India, which is just yeah. fantastic. And I'm just there together with Gagan and uh, Vijay and some others. And it's, uh, it's just all convenient. Yeah, I guess so. I and mean, if you go back two years ago, the, you wouldn't be able to have so much meetings. It's been very costly and so on. So I guess it's, um, yeah, I guess it's perfect here. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know the most common... Um, it will probably make it into the uh, Svenska Academy, the Swedish Academy's uh, book of words. It's sort of, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Everybody has learned how to say that. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, 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 but I think we, uh, we, we've certainly learned how to do uh, video meetings. And I, uh, I, I've had that conversation in a few other calls I've, I've done that uh, I, I don't think it will ever go back uh, to wh where we were before. Because I think business people have realized that they, they save a lot of money, no traveling costs. <laughs> But, but also enormous amount of time. You know, I can just uh, have a meeting with you, Bengt, and then uh, half an hour later or even five minutes later, I can sit in a meeting with India. You know, it's, it's so fast and uh, you can have 10 meetings a day, whereas before you typically had two physical meetings. So, uh, and, and also I think about the, 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 the webinar we have this autumn was yeah. excellent to gather different kinds of groups talking about the, the payments, easy, easy connect, you sit all around in, in Sweden and you're not able to travel to Stockholm for a webinar for a panel. Uh, you just click on and you can participate in a, a panel about payments and other stuff, of course. So it's... Uh, yeah, no, I agree. I, I think uh, the reason it. why it's so easy for me to do this because I'm I'm the producer, uh, sort of. I, I just don't do yeah. the rendering afterwards. I, I use my uh, UX guy, Thomas, for that. But uh, otherwise, I invite for these and I set it up and I, I can press the button so we can start the recording and, uh, and, and the Zoom does the rest for me. So it's uh, super easy uh, to yeah. organize all these interviews, sort of. So it's... Uh, no, and, and I agree with you. I think the webinar series was... Uh, I really want to thank you because I think you, you pulled together uh, the first webinar with, uh, you know, uh, Christina Weissammer from uh, Central Bank of Sweden uh, and Erik Gutwasser from uh, MasterCard and yourself then. Uh, mm. So I, I think we set the scene really well there in the first webinar for, uh, for the whole series, actually. Uh, it was really good. Yeah, and the whole series was, the timing was perfect. I mean, it's building up now that the, the politicians have to engage more in the yeah. payment sector. They haven't been doing that for quite a while, I would say. But now we're, we're getting closer to a, a choice. I and mean, when we talk about the e-corona and so, Swedish e-corona. And that's an important uh, decision to take. And But it's coming closer and closer to take that. Either we go with the e-corona or we don't. And then we have to another different road. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, yeah. I, my feeling was sort of, I, I think there... I think the, we will have a, a digital uh, central bank issued. Uh, I, I think that's for sure. Uh, what's not so clear yet is some of its features, it's sort of what, how it will be implemented in some of the features. I think that's, but, but, uh, but that we will have it, I have no doubt. I know they say they haven't taken the decision and I don't think they, well, to some extent they can, because I think as we discussed in that meeting, a value-based, um, e-currency, which is sort of carried uh, in mobile phones or on cards, they mm -hmm. can do that with the remit they have today. They don't need a new laws for that. So yeah, correct. It, it's only if it's going to be account-based. And I don't think it should be account-based. I think some of the politicians were quite clear on that, that uh, you should be the bank, the bank for the banks. You should not be the bank for the public. Yeah. So well, uh, it had to be some alternative. And it's, uh, it's uh, like I said, or it's easier for an uh, offline transaction with that. Uh, set up as well. Yeah, no, I, yeah. As as their, you know, their current currency, the physical cash can do offline. I think that this is the piece that they have to deliver. Uh, and mm. If they don't deliver that, I think uh, the plethora of digital online services like Swish and all the card payments, what can they add? Nothing, in my opinion. They, they need to replicate cash. Otherwise, and I, you know, we we are talking to some uh, companies who are providers of uh, e currency at the moment, and they they are saying that. Uh, 
it, it's a must uh, sort of skull crab, must demand of uh, central uh, central banks that offline is you know you have to solve offline, and that needs to be solved. Yeah, I guess so. Otherwise, it's just a duplicator of the the, the, the what we call bank uh, bank payments. You have yeah. To, not a, so so we have to offer something else. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw that because. Um, uh, would, I, 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 did I send you that before this interview? That Visa, Visa has been experimenting with uh, offline payments. Uh, for yeah, you CBDC, said that. Central banks. Yeah. It, did you? Did it, you it, it was interesting. I think. Yeah, it was very interesting. I guess uh, everybody's been looking into it for the last five years. I would say yeah. how to, to solve this uh, solution because it's uh, that is what we see. It's, it's uh, concern and also the state who's going uh, moving towards a cashless society do see that as a concern it's a risk if the, the whole payment digital infrastructure is down well you need some alternative the cash has been there before but that is not an alternative anymore so i think that's getting more clear for everyone you need an alternative that is offline yeah, that works uh, just like cash is. And, and I think if, if now cash is starting to disappear in Sweden, we, we can't rely on cash because I think it's not just like the notes will be not everywhere, but, but I think the, all the infrastructure for handling cash, you will know that you, your merchants doesn't want to pay high fees uh, because I think the fees will go up uh, because uh, there is, uh, it, it's, if you're going to do the same service, but you have less cash in circulation, it will be more and more of, a, of an expensive uh, means of payment, the physical cash, I think. So uh, I, I think we, as I agree with you. We have to move forward. We can't go yeah. back, really. I mean, the problem is, I mean, even if, I mean, you and I, we don't wear any cash anymore. Mm. So, so if it's going down when you are at the store or whatever you are to, to do, do some payment, you usually don't have cash in your wallet. No. So there's no alternative, even though it's the option. So I guess... Uh, you really have to look forward instead to, to solve the digital uh, offline solution. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And, and, and it's coming, Bengt. It's coming. Uh, I think we will um, <laughs> We will probably, uh, you will never be a profit in your own country. So we will go to India first and prove it there. But it's a good, yeah. it's a good market to prove it. But um, I, I, I think Sweden is also very ripe for it, uh, given the our uh, very special, because we are an outlier in the world. Uh, cash is actually... The amount of cash uh, has just uh, is actually increasing in the world. Uh, it's just yeah, no, no. way it's uh, taking it away. <laughs> yeah, also the ATM, excluding India, is going up. Yeah. More ATMs around the world, so it's gonna kind of strange, but but it's that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. No, we are we are a little bit. We we are not as logom uh, as we want us <laughs> as we want to believe. Sort of. now that's no, but I, that's what I, like I said before, I mean, you, if you have worked with Sweden and India, I guess you can learn very much from those com countries and the development there. Uh, that's, that's what I think. I don't know, but I, that's what I no, think. No, I agree. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's, uh, it's brilliant to be in Sweden who has uh, its uh, special uh, sort of situation, but, but also in India, being, it's sort of a world you know, global market, 18% of the world's population live there. Uh, and it's uh, just exploding in terms of mobile payments right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's not a bad place to be. And, and we're, not, yeah. uh, we're, not a, we're not seen as a, a newcomer anymore. I think, we are, uh, every, I think we have almost touched most people there right now in the payment space. So uh, we are, we are um, people are aware of what we can do. Uh, and it's interesting. And, and um, I think 2021 will be crunchish year where we will have a, a great breakthrough. And, uh, it will probably be first in India, as I said. You, it's easier to become a profit there than to yeah. uh, to do it in uh, your home country. But I, I, you know, uh, there, there are, uh, the, yeah. I think we will uh, eventually. I think we will uh, show show what we can do, even in, in the Swedish market and others as well. I, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, as you know, it's a, the finance sector is a conservative sector. So yeah. I think uh, it's good that someone coming from the outside. Uh, look at it in a different way and uh, uh, put up solution for that. Otherwise, it takes too long for them yeah. to, to solve it themselves. Yeah. The, the, beauty, the question the beauty, is... The beauty with our solution is that if you think of it, the online settlement cloud 
does not know if the transaction that we send to the cloud, if that is happening right now momentarily at the purchase moments, or if it, or it, or if it sort of uh, has happened two hours ago. Uh, so we, we, our solution, we don't change anything of this advanced big blob of uh, online settlement, which is a huge machine. Uh, we don't, we don't touch yeah. it. Uh, the only thing we've done is that we have separated in two steps, which I think is an ingenious, simple way uh, giving at the moment of payment, why should we be reliant on the cloud? We don't have to, uh, let's solve that. And then uh, just bank that transaction at any time, uh, immediately or later. The online cloud doesn't change uh, for that operation, which is, a, which is the great thing. Because if we, if we had to touch and change the online world, uh, it would have been, um, it would have taken um, many years. Yeah, and then that's a good one to, to come from that side. You're looking at a different perspective, and uh, well, that's uh, that's the trick. That's uh, um, I guess that's uh, what you um, that's uh, your uh, your clue, so to say, uh, when it, when it come from the outside and look at into the sector because we work in the, the sector is working what they have done for quite many years and, and try to improve that instead of look it from a, a different perspective. I guess. Yeah, I mean, as you said, uh, the whole industry is moving online, online, online even more. And all of a sudden we say, well, uh, we, did, we never understood that. So we, we do another <laughs> approach, <laughs> which is sort of uh, why, why don't you stop doing that online, online? Why don't you think a little bit offline instead? Which I yeah. think it's, uh, has its merits. But we still work with online. It's just that, as I said, you don't have to maybe, maybe have online at the moment of payment. Uh, because it's a very time critical. Why be re why be reliant on sort of a little bit sensitive uh, systems then? Uh, mm. Because uh, you, I think your merchants will be more, more happy if uh, this is sort of a you know always robust, just like cash. I think they like that in a digital form. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to follow your your trip. Um... In both in India and in Sweden, um, I look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, and no, we'll uh, and and you, you know, Bengt, you either we'll meet up in Stockholm, but I, I don't travel as much. But I know you, you, you and I, we we share uh, we share a common uh, uh, childhood as we have played soccer together in Helsingborg in Eskilstuna. Yeah. Yay for that! <laughs> <laughs> Yay for that! Yeah, or we can see in, in Helsingborg. I go there once in a while. Yeah, so, uh, you have still your, uh, you, you have your uh, your family sort of. Uh, yeah, my there. father, my father is still living in in, in Helsingborg. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I and and you know, so am I still. So, uh, so uh, any time, Bengt, if you're down in Skåne, uh, well, I, I know where you in you're sitting in your high tower at uh, Kungsgatan. So I, uh, I'll find you at Svensk Handel uh, if I'm in Stockholm. Uh, yeah, let's you know that. It. Yeah. yeah, you're more than welcome. Yeah, you no, know that. Today, Thank you so much, Bengt, for uh, giving your perspective from a Swedish Trade uh, Federation. Uh, I think it's been great. And, uh, and also, again, thanks so much for your support during the, uh, the webinar series. Uh, that was very important to get it off uh, to a great start and, and getting sort of that panel that you, you had contacts to. So that was fantastic. Yeah, um, I'm great to, to we have connected again after a couple of years and follow your, your um, development that's very great and like i said before i have to emphasize all the new players so that we get more competitions and better payments in the future so yeah no that's what you do you. you help competition come about and we are we happy <laughs> to uh, but but i it's one of the things that what we do we don't really compete i think we are creating our you know have you heard of this i, I talked to gagan today and uh, or we, we released the interview today with gagan and he was talking about the blue ocean strategy that uh, you know, there's a red ocean. This is where you mm -hmm. have competition. Uh, people bite each other. But uh, <laughs> in the blue ocean, because this is a you know what we do here with offline payments, it's an, it's a new thing, uh, and we're creating a blue ocean, uh, which is sort of a new uh, you know very very happy sea. <laughs> Without oh well, eventually will you come to the blue to the Red Sea? I guess. Because, yeah, I no, mean, I think there will be some sharks coming into the our blue ocean, and then it will become red. I think that's how <laughs> markets develop. But they start blue, and we yeah, are right now sure. in seen uh, the blue lagoon water. You know, <laughs> uh, still Brook shields. But yeah, uh, eventually we go become red. I guess, but uh, eventually but swim safe now then. Yeah. Perfect, Bengt. No, but uh, have a good one. And thanks for uh, 
taking the time to be part of this uh, these sort of interviews. I really appreciate that, Bengt. Yeah, it was great to be with you. Okay, Thanks. together, Bengt. All right. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.